Welcome back. We are restoring this massy steam hammer. In the last episode, we got the new shaft installed, and today I'm going to be taking this block of bronze and turning it into a new and updated version of this valve component. And that, of course, is because we had to open up this bore to clean it up, and along with the new shaft that I made last time, all the measurements are out of whack, hence the need for a brand new piece. And so here's what I've done. I paid a toddler to come up with an engineering drawing for the project. And as you can see, it's got all the measurements we need ready for me to go into the lathe and begin machining operation of one. All right, so hopefully this helps you make heads or tails of what is happening and what has happened. The diameter of this is the same as the bore of that. And we bored this hole as wide as the flats on this shaft. And so next, this has to go into the mill for us to cut these features, get the right amount of actual valve material that touches the bore. And we have to cut the orifice that'll suit that shaft, as well as create a way for it to mount to the shaft and be able to be adjusted so it has just the right contact with the bore. Tell you what, every time I have to take a piece, out of one machine to go into the next machine, I get nervous. Because I'm lazy and I'm using a three-jaw chuck, I can't just put this back exactly how it was. The outer diameter and the inner diameter are concentric to one another, but taking it in and out, because of the very minor inaccuracies of a three-jaw, I wouldn't put it in the same spot exactly, and it would no longer be concentric. Gosh, I hope I've got the order of operations right. Come on. Oh crap a doodle roo. No! No 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 no. I think I just broke my indexing head. Why is that spinning? Oh! What? This is not meant to happen! Apparently this little tiny weeny indexing head is not cut out for the uh, task that we had it working on today. So apparently we've been putting far too heavy of a cutting load. Uh, I think I found the problem. It's threaded on. So lesson learnt, if you've got a little dividing head like this, it's very possible that it unthreads. So watch your cutting forces. <laughs> Mother! I can't believe it. I was trying to tighten it. Ay, ay, ay. Gotta fix that. All right, let that dry. Should be good as new. Alrighty, so that's what she's looking like so far. I need to trim the sides of this. When that's in the valve, the width, or I guess like relative angle of the ends of this bronze piece is gonna be quite crucial. And again, just like I said in the last video, we don't know if what I see to build off of is actually what it was when it was designed and engineered. We also know that we've changed up diameters and the actual bore itself is a couple of millimeters larger. And as we can pretty clearly tell, this is a repair job. We're left just completely gambling, gambling on the decisions we make. Now I went and took a little bit of a rough angle measurement to try and work out what I think is the key component of this valve. And these handy dandy drawings read that as 103 degrees. I also have a width measurement here, about 52 millimeters. But knowing 103 degrees, divide 103, divided by two, is that like 46.4? I can go ahead and turn this to 51-ish. And if the edge of our cutter is on center line, that should cut one half of the valve in the right spot. Doesn't that look like it would be just taking off so much material? I don't like that at all. You can always cut a little off, but you can't cut a little on. Maybe I'll just trim it just a little bit. In the future, if there's too much valve, we can just grind or file it back down manually. Now have a look at this. This has a hole in it, and I presume that is so that when this is in the shut position, there will always be a trickle of some pressure and a trickle of some oil into this valve assembly here. And presumably that's important, and presumably that hole is very critical. 
we've got to put one in ourselves. So we've got to work out what diameter is it. That looks pretty good. But notice the design on this uh, this valve piece. Obviously, it's hollow back here, which means that this can just kind of go straight in. Boom, cowabunga. Easy peasy. But on ours, if we do something similar, well, nothing's going to happen. There's not going to be any, any, any relief pressure to get through until we get into that hole, which is going to be filled with a bar. So what I think I'm going to have to do, drill in some sort of a dog leg. Drill one direction, then come in 90 degrees, drill the other direction. Jamie, I don't need to do a dog leg. I could just drill the hole at an angle. We put the drill bit in like here and then just pop out right there. Ah! We're through. Right, so now I think we can take this out, put this in the lathe, see if our glue has set. Hmm. That should be illegal. It doesn't look right. Woo! Surely it's about done. Ta-da! Right, deburr it, then back to the mill. Right, let's go see if this fits on the shaft. Oh, it's a bit toasty. Look how shiny and rectangular that is, Jamie. Mmm. I have a theory to discuss, and that is that for ultimate comfort and peak performance in the workshop or in life, the focus has to be right here. Prime comfort and productivity starts here. We've treated what we adorn our most important parts with as an afterthought, but we're wrong because we all know bunching poor fit and swampy butts because of poor moisture management make for an awful day, but yet we still buy the same old underwear, but it doesn't have to be like that anymore. Today's sponsor is Me Undies, and I am an absolute convert to their underwear. They feature micromodal fabric, which is incredibly thin, stretchy, very so soft, soft, and does a phenomenal job at wicking moisture away from your sweaty cheeks so that you can stay dry, not sticky. They've got tons of styles to choose from and an incredible number of patterns, whether you want to keep it classy and neat or get a little bit crazy. Now, they sent me a few pairs of me undies to try, and I absolutely love them. And I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I went and used my own link, meundies.com forward slash forge, and I got 20% off, as well as free shipping, on a bunch more pairs of underwear from them because I just didn't have enough. So please go to meundies.com forward slash forge, and you get 20% off your purchase, as well as free shipping. Be prepared for summer with me undies. Click that link down below. It presses on the shaft. Look how closely that fits the bore. Very exciting. Right, let me get the shaft out, because what I now need to do is find a way of bolting this to the shaft in such a way that we can slide this into that contacting face of the valve. Pretty cool to actually see what the compressed graphite cord looks like. You can see the ring from the bronze gland. That's how they made seals. Nowadays, they do it with buds training. Well, better a tight fit than a loose fit. Let me tell you what, needs a little bit of fettling. I think I've made a little bit of an oopsie here. Now, what I did on this is, in order for our valve to slide neatly down it, I had to do a little bit of filing. And good, it'll slide down, it'll have just a nice little bit of pressure there, a little tension. But I didn't think about whether it should go in this way or this way or this way. And we have some very important features here that need to be clocked in the right orientation. I pulled up a picture of when we first received the machine and I see that our little arm was up at a 45 degree angle. That's presumably when the machine is shut off and not running. So arm up at a 45 degree angle. We'll need this to be sat horizontal so it's not letting pressure in. We need to replicate that on our new part. So arm up at a 45 degree angle and I have filed on the wrong two sides because now that will not fit. That goes there, that lines up. This should thread on. And now what I tried to design into this, and I hope it was sensible, is that with this screw and that lock nut, we can push the bronze component towards the inside wall of the bore on our valve, and we can do that by tightening up that bolt here at the back. Jamie, one thing that's just occurred to me is this. How am I going to put this on? It's like uh, those ship in a bottles. This has to go in there. I have to slip this on and screw it in. Uh, 
Hmm. You hmm. could take it out, put it on, and then put the bar through that way and put the cap on afterwards. Yeah, that's smart. All right, that goes there. I need an Allen key. Alan! Alan! Right, this is what I get for not being an engineer. I think I've messed up the design here. I thought you said it was ready to put in the machine. Yeah, I thought so too, Jamie, but I seem to think that the lock nut here to stop this from spinning and coming loose needed to be on the outside. I think that needs to be on the inside, but there's no space for it on the inside. So this whole like, oh, I'm gonna design it so I can move it around to be tight and have good tolerances clearly was a silly idea. What if this comes undone and then it gets stuck in the valve and then the machine breaks? Ah! It does look pretty sick though. It really does look like it's not concentric to the uh, to the hole. But isn't that because this isn't held on the other side? Potentially. Oh, yeah. You're not going to know that because it's going to be closed up. Exactly. So it's like I need to put a camera in there to see what it looks like. See what though? Looking down there, see how the shaft doesn't line up? I bet that's because of our handy little adjustment. Let's adjust it. Bring that backwards. Are you trying to become a lifeguard or something? Yeah, going through a David Hasselhoff phase. Mm-hmm. Go on, get in there. How about that? Oh, oh, does it line up? I have no idea what's happening inside there, but it at least lines up there. But since it's in there, let's work on some of the other things that need to happen. Back over here, we have that outlet. The one that takes pressure from these holes around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside. Guess who's back? And it diverts that pressure somewhere, and we think it's there. Or at least we're gonna act confidently like it is. And so, time to work some pipe. Time to lay some pipe. Work some pipe. Whoa! Oh, it sounds broken. Right, so first of all, Jamie, we need a nipple. Come on, <laughs> give, me, give me a nipple. All right, now we need an elbow. <laughs> give me your elbow. Get off. <laughs> God, that's a loose hole. This is what we're working with on this machine. Ridiculously worn threads. That would go like that. Shoot, I don't know. Did you just buy some random stuff? Yeah. And you just thought, oh, that'll do. I mean, I measured, I like, got a tape measure out. You know, I kind of like took the tape and went like, well, I can't find a tape measure, Jamie, so I, I did this with the tape. <laughs> do you have another nipple, Jamie? I think I'm gonna run out of nipples. Whoa, look at that. I think a little bit of fine tweaking at the end is all that's gonna need. You know what that means? Time for the front valve. Let's have a play with that. Yeah, baby. What? Right, that'll live like that. That'll live like that. This clearly must install from the top, and that uh, will reciprocate up and down. See what I'm talking about? And this will pack our gland. That will go under there. Boom. That is a very dry assembly of the front valve. We're just missing something here on top. Presumably, we need a thing up there held on by these three bolts. Now what there was, was this doohickey. Now we already remade a doohickey quite like that over here. So I think we shall remake that doohickey for the front portion right now. On we go! This means we can now do the absolute proper and final, that's a lie. There's no way this is gonna be the final assembly because I'm sure I'm gonna have to take it apart. But I wanna put gaskets in place. I wanna put gland packing in place. This whole rear valve stuff, we're assembling it. So let's go find our gaskets. Aha! Got that thing out of there. Is that a bit of calamari? Whoa, that moves so smoothly. The wonders of graphite rope. Wah. Okay, we've got to be careful with these things. They look very fragile. <gasps> it's so cute. Like it was made for it with the help of a computer. That one will live on top here. Oh. This is too thick. It won't fit in its spot. Oh. <laughs> That is smooth, Jamie. Right, guys, what do you call this? I would say that this is an adjustable spanner. I call it a wrench all the time. 
And I actually don't know the difference between wrench or spanner. I call everything a wrench. I Is it an adjustable wrench or just a wrench? I call this a wrench, I call this a wrench, and I call these wrenches. So this is a spanner. This is an adjustable spanner because it's adjustable. And that is a socket wrench. Let us know, what do you call it? Option A, wrench. Option B, other wrench. Option C, spinny wrench. According to Google in the US, both fixed and adjustable tools are known as a wrench. See, in, but it's correct. This is interesting though. In the UK, the fixed tool is known as a spanner, but the adjustable type is known as a wrench. Didn't you just say this is a wrench in England? Supposedly, but it's not. No one calls that a wrench. The internet just said so. Right. Now the ultimate question here is, Jamie, what do people call you? Spanner or just a tool? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? You dropped all the spanners. The freaking <laughs> wrenches. Again. Christine. Ooh, I think we're gonna run into a little snaggle here, Jamie. You remember this issue? How these encroach upon that circle. So we can't put those in place. We have to do some fettling. Oh, there's stainless steel inside here, remember? It doesn't cut, because there is like a tiny, ever so tiny layer of stainless steel sheet. Maybe with a great pair of scissors. Oh yeah, it's doing it. Boom. Okay, according to the photos, this random nut lives right there. Oh, so funny. Right, right, right. That is a linkage. frick a doodle -roo. Holy guacamole. Look at that. We adjust this again. We've put the linkage back together. Minus the treadle. That is just beautiful. The valves work and move smoothly. We've got plenty of question marks. And Jamie just told me something very scary, which is that most likely in the next episode, we need to put power to it. And I do not have a steam boiler. I look forward to finding out how we do that in the next one. Please go get yourself a pair of me undies underwear. The link is down below. And we really appreciate you supporting our sponsors, not only because we'd like you to have great underwear, but also because that helps us be able to keep cracking on with these videos. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.